all the excitement going on in the city of Kamloops, there's a wonderful performance at the Sagebrush Theater, which I'm going to be talking about later. It just reminds us how relevant and important the story of Jesus, the disciples, their teachings are very alive and well in the 21st century. And I look at all of you today, let us share that joy with the rest of the world. Yeah, not just Kamloops, the rest of the world. Uh, beginning with our announcements, a uh, special note, um, hospitality, okay? Hospitality Sunday Coffee needs some new volunteers. Carol Hutchings will be at a table in the hall after the service this morning with information for anyone who can help offer with this and other hospitality needs. So please um, talk to Carol. Um, remember, hospitality Sunday coffee needs you. Also, a special silent auction to benefit the Ukraine Studies Scholarship will be taking place Sunday afternoon, uh, which today, from 3 to 6 at Hills of Peace Lutheran Church, corner of, I believe, Robson and Summit. Um, we have, there's a wide variety of silent auction items, and we'll also have both Canadian and Ukrainian snacks to share. The goal for this scholarship is $25,000. We're just below 11000 at this point. We're going to get there. So we're hoping to do well this afternoon, and thank you for whatever help you can provide, and maybe you yourself can even attend. In these spiritual walks, which are transforming into party, celebration, fiesta, with Ali and Derm Fridays at 10 a.m. at Riverside Park. Lots of conversations, exercise, and enjoying our downtown parks. And I am experiencing, as each day passes, the lovely, beautiful city of Kamloops, British Columbia. That's exciting. Folks, uh, tonight, our sound meditation, Rob Gretzinger will be sharing his gifts of music. It, it's beautiful. If you've never come, I encourage you. Uh, I will definitely be returning because it's, it's wonderful. The melodies coming from the bells, a form of healing for the soul, and Rob's leadership is outstanding in that area. As I said, well, of course, Fridays, we'll continuing the walks with Ali and Derm. And next week, next week, Diane Stewart will be leading the worship service with Sabrina, who will be leading the music. I also a big thanks to Reverend Philip Newman, who's covering for me emergency pastoral care. Uh, thank you very much. It allows me to go. I will be at um, Canadian Association of Spiritual Care. It's the AGM, the first three days, beginning tomorrow evening. So. A, let's welcome next week Diane Stewart and her daughter Sabrina. It'll be wonderful service. The following week, another guest, uh, Reverend Deborah Walker, will share her thoughts during sermon time as part of Earth Week, which is actually Monday, April 22nd, concluding the 29th. So, April 28th, that Sunday, uh, Reverend Deborah will be sharing her thoughts as part of Earth Week. She has done a lot of work, a World Climate Forum. Um, I have a, a special little surprise with Gordon for the All Ages story on that day, April 28th, but Reverend Deborah Walker will be speaking Sunday, April 28th. As we continue, Ali and Sakshi setting up a card-making, sympathy cards to please see them during off coffee hour at the back in the labyrinth room. So that's Ali and Sakshi set up card making for sympathy cards. Please see them during uh, the coffee hour. And, and something I heard the pitter patter of running. Um, I just, I want to share this with you. It was really exciting. I had a request this morning. I had a request from one of our youth, if I can, if I'm phrasing the question correctly, Andrew, 
can I light the Christ candle this morning? That's so exciting. I don't have to ask. See, I mean, I do that with the scripture reader. Who would like to, but I don't have to do that with the Christ candle. It comes to me. Now, isn't that interesting? When you look at that, compare that, we have most of the adults reading scripture where I have to ask, the youth who are lighting the candles, and I don't have to ask. Now that's something interesting to reflect upon. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right, Don. Give it up. Oh, yes, yeah, that's what I want to see. I mean, don't have to ask. They actually come to me. That's real. And with that joy, as you can tell, I'm a little bubbling up and down. That's not, yep, yeah, that's true. We are working on something very special. Very, very special. Uh, Marcy is helping out. Um, and I've mixed emotions about this, a lot of joy, and I'm, I'm sad, too, at the same time. But I'm learning about teamwork. This is a good learning for me as I grow and mature, that when we come together in team, exciting things can happen. So this is what we're working on, folks. As I mentioned, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Some of you have already seen it, uh, playing at the Sagebrush Theater. Uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, I've had the chance, it's in your e-news, to speak with none other <laughs> than Jesus and Judas. I'm not kidding, it's true. The actors play Jesus and Judas. Um, they're gonna confirm with me, it's their day off. Today's their only day off, they can't be here today. Uh, but Wednesday, okay? Uh, my fervent hope, and I'm very confident about this, that they will be here, and we're gonna have a big crowd. I'm very confident of that, too. Uh, Marcy was asking me, oh, yeah, I'm very confident because this is KUC. So why wouldn't I be confident? I mean, this is obviously, and that's why we're going to need to have it in here, in the sanctuary, the actors playing Jesus of Nazareth and Judas Iscariot coming together Wednesday, 11 a.m., Marcia will be interviewing them, ask, we're going to meet after the service. What are the questions going to look like? So if you have some questions, how many, just think about this, how many churches, folks online, how many other churches can say Jesus and Judas are coming together in person? I mean, really, can you name me another church on the whole planet Earth which is doing that? Well, we're going to be doing that this Wednesday. I, I, would, I would love to be here, but as I said, I, she, uh, I'm not in that day. Actually, I won't be in London in the evening. I'll be elsewhere, but saxophone teacher comforted me. You never, you'd be surprised where pastoral care comes from. He told me, Andrew, don't worry. I know you can't be here, but you can tell the congregation in the future when Jesus and Judas were here at the church, you were literally out in left field. Um, <laughs> it's actually true. I will be at the Blue Jays Yankees ball game. So, uh, I will be here in spirit. I am very grateful. Thank you, Marcia. Very, very grateful because I need somebody to interview them. Um, I'll be back, but they will have left by then. So it's got to be this Wednesday. Um, more details to come. Uh, it's demanding on their voices. So I, I am keeping in contact with them. Uh, if, if any of you are curious, both Jesus and Judas, they both use Mac OS and Android, if any of you were curious, that if they have a specific operating system they like to use, so they really don't care. That's wonderful, and we will be giving more news about that. So look out this Wednesday. Come here, bring all your friends. Wednesday, 11 a.m., it'll be something absolutely incredible. I think part of the history, history-making day of Kamloops United Church. Uh, now I'd like to recognize a territorial acknowledgement that the territory that, oh, yes, yes, you know what, I'm, I sh I'm a silly me. Uh, I'm so excited. Here you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you for our sound crew. This is the closing, Jesus Christ Superstar, right here. Okay, it was a great show. Some of you can recognize it because you saw something very similar, especially the folks who were there Friday. I know they saw this because this was taken Friday. <laughs> um, next, folks, next. Ah, oh, look at that. This is the actor right there rep, uh, playing the role of Judas Iscariot. Okay, this wonderful, uh, very, very nice fellow. And of course, you know, the two to his right, they're actually to my left right now. And that's me. 
One more, one more, folks. One, oh, ooh, ooh, yeah, right there, right there. Look at that, right in the middle. Uh, that, his name's also Michael, and he's the actor representing Jesus. So, I mean, what, what a wonderful opportunity just to ask them, how did you prepare for such a role? Playing the role of Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, what is that like? Oh, don't have to wait too long, only Wednesday. So this is a lot of joy. Now let's continue forth now into our territorial acknowledgement. The unceded territories of the Tecumlich Neshwapmik. That we worship, we play, we're blessed to go to amazing theaters, uh, the Sagebrush Theater. We have an amazing community of faith. People at home or in the hospital, we reach out to you. You are not alone. We love you. And we learn from the ancestors, the elders of First Nations communities, how to live in right relations with our neighbors. Now for our next slide, an affirming community of faith since 1996, Kamloops United Church. And uh, part of the conversation I had with the actor playing Judas is we do recognize Kamloops United Church is a two-spirit LGBTQIA plus affirming community of faith. But whatever your faith or identity, I told them about the Monday Thursday service. We read from the gospel of Judas. He was quite interested in there. I said, really, you guys did that? Yeah, and you still have a job. I still have, a, at least as far as I know, I still have a job. Uh, but he was quite excited. So, folks, that's why I'm confident that, yes, um, I'm very confident they'll be coming here, and it's a lot of joy. So now I need help. This is the part I need some help because it's doing a lot of work. Uh, Everett, uh, come up forth, please, and I need help, or Jonas and Steve, I need help with lighting of the Christ candle. There we go. Isn't that, this is exciting. There we go. It, it's, um, it was a youthful energy sparking the light of Christ. Here we go. All right. Hey, Jonas. Here we go. There. Look at that. I know it's all that, you know, all that excitement. There we go. There we go. Uh, teamwork. Thank you. Thanks, Jonas. Um, folks, it, it's, it's a lot of joy. That was beautiful. Beautiful moment. Thank you, Jonas. Big thank you. And now let us take this beautiful moment and share it with music, with our very talented handbell choir.
how blessed we are here. What a wonderful way to start our worship from the music, the talents of our handbell choir. Excellent. I'm very grateful. Thank you. We are blessed. Let's take this blessing forward in our call to worship. As we gather in this sacred space, let us open our hearts to the presence of the risen Jesus. Let us remember the words of Jesus as he appeared to his disciples, offering them peace and understanding. Let us come together with expectant heart, ready to encounter the living Christ in our midst. May our worship be a testament to the transformative power of resurrection as we embrace the truth that Christ is alive and among us. Let us rejoice in the assurance that we are witness to this extraordinary love. Call to share the good news with all the world. So let us lift up our voices in praise, knowing that Jesus walks with us guiding us in truth and grace with Jesus, with hope, with healing and assurance. Our heart is nourished by the water well that Jesus provides. We are here, we are loved, and we are graced to be in a loving community of faith where we support each other, embraced into God's loving arms. As we walk with mystery, we walk with confidence. We have our community. We overcome doubt with love. You are loved. You have hope in our community. Let's lift this up in music. More voices, number 90, don't be afraid. Come forth, we have our, our, our magic carpet. Look at this. Come on forth. Oh, this is nice. This was a good idea. I, I got this from the worship committee. Um, they suggested, and I could have it set up before so I don't have to do it. This, oh, look. Wow, first Becca. Wow. Hey, Devin. Oh, Addison. Oh, oh look at that. I see Jonas coming. Nirjula. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this. And and I don't, I don't recognize. I don't recognize her. Oh. Well, not sure. It could, could playing the role of doubting Thomas should. Yeah, yeah. The that is true. Um, my magic carpet does not have any seat belts, so the doubt is founded. It it is well founded. I have something to show you in the magic bag. Look right there on the screen. Look at that. What is that thing? Ooh, you did a project. Wow. Oh wow. Do, wh what was it like, Dev? Wow, I almost forgot. Hold that thought, hold that thought. Yeah, I should have clicked the mic because I know I just got a message. People online want to hear you. How did that message work? Who cares? We'll worry about that later. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Is this mic on? Hello, hello. Won't you tell me? Um, yes? Am I doing something wrong with the mic? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, w okay. Once more. Devin, what was that project like with the solar eclipse? Um, 
So we had a black paper and we put a, like a white circle and then we put the colors over it and then we like spread it out on the black paper and then we took off the white circle and it was like a black um, circle with like the wow. white stuff like that. Ooh, wow, that's really cool. Isn't that cool, Becca? That's cool, that's cool. Um, Devin, when you did that, did you see any aliens? No. No, no, we oh, are. I was worried. I, I was scared about that. I have a story to share. Okay, here we go. Here we go. About Thomas and the solar eclipse. Once upon a time, Becca, in a city nestled among the rolling hills, there lived a young boy named Thomas. Thomas was known for his curious nature and adventurous spirit. And one day, people from his village, they all gathered, wearing special glasses. Yeah, can you believe that? Some of them were pink like yours, Becca. But to look at the night sky. Now, Thomas was fascinated by this eclipse, what we see on the screen, and eagerly joined the crowd. As the moon began to cover the sun, darkness fell over the land, and Thomas, Jonas Thomas watched in wonder. Wow, check that out. Whoa, wow. The world around him became darker and cooler, but Thomas, Nirjula, was afraid. Like, would the sun come back? Or is like the sun going is the sun going on study leave like they like me like was it coming back what's going on is this you know if we were watching this folks like a couple thousand years ago remember they don't have the same scientific knowledge we do this could be a very scary moment suddenly what's your name do you want to tell me are you Thomas you came to help me out. Thank you, thank you. Because huh. I was getting scared. I'm really glad you're here. Suddenly, he remembered the story of doubting Thomas from the Bible. Thomas remembered that Jesus looked at him with his own eyes, and he touched the wounds of Jesus. He believed there was no need to doubt. Thomas used that same courage, yeah, that same courage, and he knew the sun was going to come back. Now, one of the elders in the community came to Thomas, and Thomas fenced the cells of peace, look at this, the peace right beside me, peace and confidence as the sun returned, and he knew that God's love and wonder were always present. That's been important for all of us. God's love and wonder is always present. And whenever Thomas felt afraid, he remembered the lesson. He learned about faith and doubt and the incredible wonders of creation. Wow. Uh, Jonas, before we go, does that have a name, your lamb? Does it, Steve, does it have a name? Lammy. Lammy, oh, wow. Thank you, thank you, Jonas, for bringing Lammy. Yeah, that's good. Let's do a prayer, and now we'll go with Malvika and Pat off to Sunday school. Creator God, uh, fill us with the faith and courage that even when we doubt, we can still have faith, whether it's we're going to school, an assignment, or have work, you know, that parents tell us to do, or we're building upon the mission and vision of Kamloops United Church in the 21st century. Give us the faith and confidence to go forward and remember the Lamb of God. And we also help you, ask you, God, to bless Lammy and the, all the friends that we have. Amen. Thanks, John. Okay. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There we go. Oh, hi there. <laughs> did, 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 did you wanna? Did you wanna sit on this now? You got it. You got VIP. It could be all yours. Hi, what? What was your name? Do you wanna tell me? It's a secret. It's a secret. I'll try and guess it before the service is over, okay? I'm going to try and get you, you be You be comfortable and enjoy the rest of the worship service, all right? Thanks. You're cool. Thank you for coming and helping me out. I am so grateful. I have an amazing worship committee to help me out. 
the chair of council, helped me out to all their families, our youth. I mean, so I am very, very blessed. And now let's continue forward. All this blessing, hope, and love in our prayer for God's grace. Oof, there we go. All exciting, folks. In our prayer, as we invoke God, creator, source of strength and mystery, we ask for your guidance to help us see what you want to show us. We ask for patience and assurance of your love, knowing that you're watching us with compassion. We seek to know we are secure in the midst of change. We bring our hurts to you and ask you to help us find healing. As the day turns to light, a light of path of peace for our feet to walk. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace. The scripture reading this morning, the first one is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by your, our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. Second reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. 
Jesus appears to his disciples. While they are talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And from Thomas 3, Jesus said, If those who lead you say to you, See, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will become known, and you will realize that you are the sons of the living Father. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to us this morning. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. A thank you to Sandy for that wonderful reading of Scripture. And now let us raise that up. In music, number 704, God give us life.
Again, a special thank you to our talented choir, Tomas, leading us in the gifts of music, along with our handbell choir today, and also Joan on the piano. So all the musicians, thank you. And we're going to lift that joy in a message on the kingdom. Where is this kingdom? Could it be in the bag? Well, I'm going to leave it here. I will be using it soon, not right now. But from our, our gospel reading, where, very well read, uh, we have Jesus appearing to the disciples. Now they're shocked, scared, they're challenged. Um, they know what happened. Something awful, he was crucified. And now to have him reappear, it's amazement. Uh, Thomas was clearly amazed, the disciples are equally amazed what to do, what to do with this moment. Um, I ask you to reflect on this. Can, um, who was the first person that the risen Jesus appeared to? Who do the Gospels tell? Oh, wow, look at that. No wonder Marcy is interviewing him, Mary Magdalene, right away. <laughs> yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good question, where is that? Where's that in the Bible? The Gospel of... Wow, that's good, Cam. Cam got it. John 20, verses 1 through 13. I'm impressed. I didn't even use chat GBT. Very impressed. Very, very impressed. I am very lucky to be here, folks. It's Mary Magdalene. Uh, I, I'm on a whole... I'm, that's where I'm going to be going on this message. It's Mary Magdalene. Okay, so Jesus, we're known in Luke. He appears to all his disciples. Okay, Thomas, we've already covered. But John 20, verses 1 through 13, he is appearing to Mary Magdalene. The first one. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Let's pair that up with Matthew 27, verses 54 through 55. He's appearing to the women, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James. It doesn't say anywhere, Mary, mother of Jesus, but depending on Catholic, Protestant theology, there's different variations in there, but yes, James is the brother of Jesus. So he's appearing to his own mom as well from written, recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. But interesting, folks, hold that thought. Mary, Jesus, the risen Christ, appears to Mary First, now, story I want to share with you um, about this appearance of Jesus to the disciples. A um, couple that I had met when I was in seminary, they wanted to share their experience of a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, Bethlehem, the Holy Land. And they had, uh, telling me they both, they had some doubt in their mind, just like Thomas and even the disciples had doubt. Um, how does Jesus, is this him? He even eating fish. It's recorded in the Gospel of Luke. He even ate broiled fish in front of them. And uh, Luke, the chapter 24, verse 39, they thought he was a ghost. No, definitely not. Not a ghost. Verse 40, they can see the wounds in his hands and his feet. This is Jesus, has returned. So this, the couple, they're um, from a science background biology and chemistry, they're both teachers in high school. They're walking the stations of the cross, 14, 14 stations of the cross, going to Bethlehem, Church of the, um, Church of the Nativity, where the historical site of Jesus' birth, going to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, Jesus crucified, the garden tomb, Okay, there's one Catholic, one Protestant. Don't worry about it. They're close to each other. Not, not a problem. Close enough. So how they were wrestling with this. And the insight they shared was very, very interesting, which I will return to. But I opened up this message with who did Jesus, a question, who did Jesus first, as the risen Christ, who did he appear to, was Mary Magdalene. Uh, one of the joys of faith study, our Bible study group, we have wonderful discussions. Um, it was about two weeks ago. What would the Gospels look like? It was Matthew, Mark, Mary, and John. Nothing against Luke. I mean, we read from Luke this morning. It's okay. Nothing against Luke. But why isn't Mary Magdalene there? The, the first person, a woman, 
that Jesus appears to. You've heard this phrase before, the beloved disciple. And in Christian theology, it's referred to as John. Now, what's in the bag? Ha <laughs> ooh. Those of you online, if you can't see it, I'm going to just tell you this title of this book. The Other Bible. Whoa. From the first time, ancient scriptures, Gnostic Gospels, Dead Sea Scrolls, Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism. First one, Gnostic Gospels. That's what Thomas is, a Gnostic Gospel. There were a total of 52 discovered, 1945, Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Another one, the Gospel of Philip, why I'm just um, highlighting this to you, is in the Gospel of Philip, it's recorded that Jesus, you see it in the other Bible right here, Jesus used to kiss his favorite disciple on the lips. <laughs> well, you know, if, if it was John, obviously there's going to be some churches will have to rework their marriage policy. Uh, I mean, you know, because, you know, I didn't make it up. In the Gospel of Philip, very, very interesting, folks. When you read, you go deeper into the text, there's another story because there's a tremendous amount of diversity in the Christian world, not just today, but when Christianity started around 2,000 years ago. It really took its separate form after the destruction of the Second Temple, 70 CE. But there is another narrative. Let's explore that further. Now we'll go back to my story. The insight that this couple shared after they returned from pilgrimage because they saw the temple was destroyed. Just the western wall remains where they can pray. There is the, um, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is on top of the temple. That obviously wasn't there at the time of Jesus. Islam was not around. Three different faith groups, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, are all praying there. What they felt is that the kingdom, they had a change of mind, not an external location, heaven, an external place, but that the kingdom is inside of you. It's inside of you, inside of you. Inside, oh, folks online, the kingdom is inside of you. This is written right in the Gospel of Thomas, saying number three, the kingdom is inside of you. That fits very much with the temple is recreated in three days. No, there's not another building made of stones, mortar, brick, wood. It's Jesus. The temple walks with us. The temple's here today. Maybe with a little bit of luck, maybe even Wednesday at 11 a.m. Who knows? The temple, yes, we get to explore these questions. In the Gospel of Thomas, it, it tells us the temple is inside of you. What does that mean for us in the 21st century? As we explore, which I'll be doing that beginning next month, I've already talked about the Gospel of Judas, Monday, Thursday. Um, shared today the Gospel of Thomas. And next month, I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. As I speak to everyone and everyone listening online, it may be not something you usually hear the minister talking about during the sermon time. You hear Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course. Acts, Romans, Corinthians. When Luke 24, 39, they thought they saw a ghost, it may be scary to hear something from who's Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas. You mean he wrote a gospel? Yes. Mary Magdalene, she wrote a gospel? Yes. It's writing. It, what I ask you when you hear these names is to explore in your faith, just as Thomas did and the disciples, that yes, they were scared. They were definitely scared, but Jesus reappeared to them. And even today, in my conclusion, as I hold the other Bible in my hand, is that Jesus reappears to us even today in the 21st century. Might not be in the sanctuary. It might not come from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It may come from a musical. My concluding thought as I was watching Jesus Christ Superstar, I know some of you have already seen that, Sagebrush Theater, 
It was full. It was a full uh, theater. And it's been running for, um, I need your help, over two weeks. Am I correct? Yes, it's been running for more than two weeks. That's a lot of joy, folks. Think about that. Because it clearly demonstrates what we're doing. The story of Jesus is very relevant and very popular in the 21st century, 2024. It really is. We're doing very important work here. All of you, all of you online, folks right here, we're doing very, very important. It's very, very relevant. And, and, and you've, heard, um, you've heard this. We want to see more young people in church. Yeah, yeah. How come they don't come? Folks, they're very interested. If you look at, the, again, the Sagebrush Theater, there were, uh, I wasn't the youngest one there. There were a lot of people there younger than me. They're interested in the story. Jesus Christ superstar. It's very relevant. It's very popular. And that gives me, I want to conclude these thoughts with a lot of joy and hope as we go forward, that yes, the risen Jesus is clearly with us. It's very relevant in the 21st century, not just the city of Kamloops, but the whole entire globe. That's, folks, that's resurrection, and that's how Jesus appears to me today. That's what I want to be sharing with you. So take that good news home. Pray about it. Reflect on it. All the different ways Jesus appears. It might not be standard from a sermon. It might not be in the handbell choir it may be kind of shocking to your ears, a, a guitar, a drum set, but there is a lot of interest, a lot of interest. Very po I, Clearly for me, it's grown tremendously. Think of the origins of the Christianity and look at Christianity, the story of Jesus today. And the folks, by the way, in Jesus Christ Superstar, as Jesus is taken down from the cross, He's in the arms of somebody. It's not Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. It's Mary Magdalene. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us now take the Gnostic teachings the teachings of Jesus, and lift them up in music. More voices, number 157, I am a child of God.
greater of all. God of the ghetto, help comfort people who are hungry and homeless. Help us embrace people who seem secure yet live with fear. God, help us to be loving vessels of hope and guide us as we prepare our dinner table for Jesus in whatever form that he may arrive. Special prayers in our community of faith. I'm going to reach out to you. I had a wonderful visit with Bodhi and Sylvia. And I'll be sharing something from that visit on Sunday, April the 28th. And also our continuing prayers of healing for the Walden family. Also for the Routledge family. And this visit I had last Sunday was wonderful when I spent time with Doreen Vale. If I'm pronouncing that name correctly, I think. Uh, and her son, Grant. Um, I received a call. She had passed away two days after that visit. So let's hold Doreen in our prayers. The family of Grant, Greg, his brother, and their own families. Also, in our prayers of community, I would like to uphold prayers for Ron O'Lee, the former secretary at Mount Paul, who has terminal cancer. Second prayer is for peace in our world. You know, it's getting more complicated. Our news flows, what's going on in the Middle East. But for prayer that God, as the Christ candle in front of me, lights the way that a light, a path to peace. We share this with you and the whole world. And now let us say our Lord's Prayer together. Divine Parent, who art in all living things, May your presence be revered. May your kingdom of love and justice come. May your will be fulfilled on earth as it is in heavens. Give us this day the sustenance we need and forgive us our shortcomings as we forgive those who fall short against us. Lead us away from temptation and deliver us from all that harms for you are the source of all life, the power of all goodness and the love that endures forever. Amen. And it, it just related to one of the prayer requests, um, I'll need some help with this. There is a walk for peace this Saturday, and I believe it's at 11 a.m., 10 o'clock a.m., and the location, I'm sorry, Stuart Woods School Farmer's Market? Farmer's Market. Just down the street. There we go. See, this is a great example of teamwork. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and now, one more wonderful piece of music from a very talented handbell choir.
a special thank you for all three pieces of music as the bells ring, as joys, the music from the Christ candle lights our lives. And now let us, as we go in benediction, go as one by Jesus to follow, serve as one following the example of Christ's own ministry. Trust that life belongs to God and in God your life will not be lost but found. Live in hope, serve with love, go in peace. Amen. And now may peace be with you. More voices, number 168.